All right, we got ourselves a sandbagger game. This will be fun. I haven't. Mm, what haven't I done? I haven't. I guess I haven't played a sandbagger game in a while. I've played a bunch of those challenge go games. And so, yeah, this will just be nice and fun. I guess. I guess if you count my last video as a sandbagger game where I made five in a row against a seven Q, that was something like that. But. No, no, today we're going to try to play legit and try to teach some Go during the sandbagger game. So anyway, this Joseki I'm playing, this high approach, this is considered by the robots to be the best, most efficient Joseki for white. Uh, takes the biggest corner. The outside influence is like a point or two short worth of what the corner's worth. So there you go. There's a lesson. That's some knowledge. All right, here we go. Here's the first question of the game is where to play. And this is actually a pretty tough question. Here's how I'm thinking through it. Number one, this left-hand corner, very settled, very strong. And so this bottom right-hand corner, actually its influence is kind of reduced because I already have this stone here. It's very hard for both players to build anything here effectively. And this is also the narrowest space on the board other than this distance. So I'm not really interested in playing on this side. Over here, uh, doing a checking extension might be a nice move to threaten invasion and, and harassment later. Um, I also want to prevent this thickness from really extending outward, so I am considering this, but it's also the narrowest point. So even though this feels like it's it's taking advantage of the most influence, it's not covering the most distance. And so I'm, I'm, my eye is drawn more to this side of the board, uh, again, away from this corner because this is already sort of reduced. Again, this is at a distance. Um, Playing here seems very natural, but I could also play the inside. I'm, I'm probably more likely to play here if I think I can really build on this side, but again, this stone's kind of reducing my framework as well. Uh, I'm actually just going to play the inside, and of course, there's always a 3-3s. Three, so I, think, I think a lot of robots here would play 3-3. Three, three. Uh, I kind of refuse to because I kind, of, I kind of hold on to my last shred of humanity just a little bit. Um, I'm on my opponent's side of the board, so I'm going to be quite happy just settling. Now, both of these groups, this top right and bottom left, do greatly diminish the value of my top left corner potential. Um, but that's okay. We're just sort of having like a mutual destruction kind of game where, you know, by placing a, a group here and having a solid group here and having my have the influence and having black groups over here, like, it's very, very hard for uh, a natural large moyo to form. Any moyos that do form are going to be the res direct result of attacking some sort of weak group. And that's fine. So there we go. Fairly normal. Uh, here, now this group can still be harassed, which is a little bit of a problem. Uh, I'm going to try to forestall some of that harassment by playing here. And at this point, actually, I really, I really do want to come back to this top left just because this wall is so big. You know, here comes the harassing stone. Uh, and that's fine. I don't really want to do much of anything over here. I don't, I don't, <laughs> like if I go in the corner, well, Black's going to build a wall this way, and I'm going to have low, low, but then Black's wall is facing my group, so it also feels kind of bad. Um, I really should play another stone over here. <laughs> that's what I really should do. But I want to play over here. I want to, I want to diminish the, uh, the effects of this wall pretty sooner than later at this point. Let's let's just Tanuki, and he should kick, and then we'll sort of welcome a little bit of a fight. Again, I'm a little bit worried for this move. Um, where I can be, I can, I can be reduced to very small eye space very quickly. All right, we're gonna play it. So again, this wall is projecting a lot of influence. I just want to, again, play defensive. I already have some solid territory Black's territory is a lot less defined at this point, and I have Comey. Ooh, all right. After this move, I'm very tempted now to play this way, uh, which I think I will do, although I do also want to play this one first. Yeah, let's play this one first, and basically threaten to link up this way. And maybe this is even better if I, sh if I sort of armpit hit this and play this sort of exchange, but I want to I wanna give this stone a little bit of space to maneuver uh, there's still the option of cutting here. Uh, I'm still looking at taking the corner. Again, if black just ends up with this, and I end up with two low groups in the bottom left and bottom right-hand corner, that's totally fine. It's not ideal. You don't want to have a low low, because um, that usually means your opponent is building too much in the center. But in this case, I think we can manage it. Uh, just because our 
uh, black, the black stones aren't really working that well together. Uh, if black had maybe a little more of a some some more reach into the center with some of these positions, I might be a little bit more wary of black going full Takamiya here. Oh, that's he's yep okay he's really committing to this little chunk of territory this about fifteen twenty points. And that's fine he can do that totally cool. He should block this way yep and. I don't have a real reason to play this way yet. Although, actually, I guess I do. Do I? Do I let him turn there? Or do I give him the option of turning there? I think I do. Yeah. I think we make this exchange first. Uh, although, actually, no, no. So here, if I play here, here, and then I cut. I have the ladder. So the cut is pretty severe, actually. All right, let's do it. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. So, descending here, it's kind of dangerous for everyone, <laughs> but it's, an, it's, it's really invoking this cut in a very severe way, which is kind of fun. This, this def so normally black has to extend here, but black is counting on this stone being useful, um, but, I, but I'm counting on the ladder being useful, so there is this cut. So, let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, all right, well, here we go. This just got very exciting. This is where we should slow down and do a lot more reading. Did I misread this? <laughs> like right now, it looks fine. Uh, yeah, we can just read through what happens through that star point. Totally works, ladder's good. Don't know what black is going to do here. Yeah, this this stone kind of helps this fight. Like, I mean, it definitely helps, but it's not it's not really covering the weaknesses quite enough. We can we can play severely here. And and in the end, at least at this moment, I'm still glad to have made this exchange for this exchange, because uh, now we really don't have to worry about any sort of counterattack on my group. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, does that set off the ladder again? <laughs> Whoops. No, it still works. Okay. So, I just play here. Uh, I just take. <laughs> right? Easy? I should come down. I'll give black another free move, but... It is fine. Okay. Uh, I don't think he wants to commit to that. Is he increasing a sacrifice, or is he really interested in saving these two? Mm. Well, if I push out this way, he actually can live down here. That's fine. So, you'll yep, do that, and we will... Oh, we could do this and slice through. That feels dirty. Give him nothing. This feels this feels like way too big of a commitment. Like, uh, mm -hmm. Fihane's again. Uh, I guess I guess we're just gonna give him this little base here, because um, I don't really I don't really want to deal with the Aji that's left here, and I like having th this group here having lots of liberties because now. With this group being strong after these two are captured, like there's there's no center potential here for black. Uh, I'd really like to find a way to use Aji or this Aji of this stone, but there's just not much there. So that's my secret secret wish. Um, there's kind of a good shoulder hit here, but again, it's not worth much because I have this here. So this feels like uh, I get Sente to take another big point. Um, you know, here black did get his about 50, almost 15 points. Another 5, 20, maybe optimistically 10 here, another 5 here. So black altogether is looking at about 35 points, which is not a lot. Uh, you know, I'll play my move and then we'll, we'll do a similar count for white. This corner is worth at least 15, maybe up to 20. Um, there aren't really that many black stones close to it. So let's just say 15 plus Comey already gets us to 22, um, plus another 
about 12 to 13. So let's put this right at 35 plus another 10, 45. Um, yeah, this is a hard game for black at this point. Black needs to work really hard to, to make this influence into something. Um, both this little bit of influence and this little bit of influence. And even here, this is over-concentrated too, for what it's worth. Uh, and I'm, and as, if this group runs out, right, I'm going to be able to harass this stick stick group over here. So this is, this is already a, a feeling very, very nice for white. And so, so let's talk a bit for a second. What made this so nice for white? Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if we go to like the, the super top level, it's that black played a couple influence strosekis, namely this outside high approach one, and then this wall one, and yet still doesn't feel like there is a good um, opportunity in the center for anything yet. All right, over here, I think we just play here. I'm just gonna attach and just try to reduce again. How I lose this game is by letting black find some territory in an unexpected place. If we just throw, make everything else a wash for the rest of the game, this is an easy win for white. But we're going to just play the, this is a nice suke, nice attachment. Basically has black pick a side and I'll continue to take some reducing moves on the other side. That's fine. So he's gonna keep this strong and I think that's good. That means I get another forcing move. And if he crawls again, I can crawl again. And so even though I played these three stones without a base without safety, without a homeland, uh, they're fine, right? I can throw these away. I did give up a little bit of invasion possibility here. But again, I'm just being very mindful of the center. That's a good move. Uh, so actually this makes this a little bit of a point loss for me because I'm going to lose some points in the, in the corner. So good exchange for black. Maybe, that, maybe I shouldn't have played that, but... Um, there's just not a lot to do. Um, I want to I wanna just over-concentrate this as much as possible. So we'll just slap it. And if black actually works really hard not to become over-concentrated, I might have the opportunity to destroy eye shape. Yes, like this. <laughs> exactly like this. Uh, we could actually play either way. Both of these are good. Which way is better? I think outside is better, right? But this this is so tempting, <laughs> so tasty. All right, let's just play outside though. Mm -hmm. Very good. So this is a little bit of a trap, but I might. It's black is so concentrated. I might make this exchange anyway. Oh man, because black is going to cut here, and we're going to crawl out. If I play, if I just play this very simple connection, I could play here too. This is also an interesting move. Here and then jump. That seems kind of stylish. Uh, let's do that. No, eh, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> this is both looking for shape and looking to disconnect. Uh, let's make sure I want to play this one. This is maximum pressure. A lot of Q players would play here and make this tiger's mouth but it doesn't add enough pressure to this stick. And it's also not that best, not that great of shape. Tiger's mouth shape, as these hanging connections as they call them, uh, usually aren't actually going to result in eye space. And you might be looking at my shape and going, well, that's not gonna result in eye space either. Yes, but I'm a lot, I'm applying a lot more pressure to my opponent in the meantime. All right, this move's pretty serious. <laughs> uh, that's nice, that's a nice shape point. I have to be real careful there. Um, he does have this peep and connect. It looks like I live just fine if he if he just plays that normally. He could also play to disconnect these this stone. Both those things are okay. Like they're not great. Like they're definitely big losses for white. Um, either this push and cut or peep and pull back. But as long as I'm fine, I'm fine. And so I am going to cover here. And I'll, I'll take my punishment. Like, I'll get punished here. But now, I had a weak group versus a weak group situation. This is urgent. If, if this move was threatening to kill me, that would be a different situation. But as long as this move doesn't kill, we're doing great. 
and we can we can withstand this. Yeah, so he, he can't even follow up here. He's like, I gotta run. Uh, both of these look good. This one feels better, just keeping it more separated, but I don't know, they both feel good. <laughs> this one also helps, the but they both help the corner a little bit. Uh, let's just, let's just undercut the group. This three stone exchange might be coming into play very soon. If he has a weak group here that's running this way, and I have a weak group, okay, he's going to cut. That's fine. But how? Which way is he going to cut? <laughs> I think he has to cut this way. I think. Oh, he's just going to play that way. Uh, do I even care? I'm pretty sure this is a this is a non-caring situation. <laughs> hmm. This is a pretty brutal shape for him. <laughs> so is just this jumping out. Like all the all these give him big shape problems. Like like these moves need to kill me. He's just he's just fixing his own shape problems here because I could actually push out and give him give him the business. I'm not I'm not in love with this shape. <laughs> But it does certainly provoke a reaction. All right, how to manage? We got some time on the clock, right? Let's think about this gang. So anyway, territory for black is still pretty minimal. 12 points here, another 15 points here, say six points here. Actually a little bit more than that, let's give him 10. What is that? <laughs> 12, 27, 37, a couple there. Maybe, maybe black is coming up to 42. But in the meantime, we've, we're have we basically at 20 points here in the corner. There's still this little bit of Aji right here. So it's it's an optimistic 20 points. Black can still play here, though. I did lose down here, so this is closer to 10 than it is to 15. Um, even a little bit under 10 if he gets the next move on this side. Uh, 25 plus another... Looks like we'll round up to 10, given the captures. 35, another 5, 40 and Comey for 47. So still, we, we still have Sente, we're still ahead in terms of raw points. Um, he does need another move over here to to do anything. <laughs> um, this is the move I really want to play. It's just whether or not I'm strong enough if he can fight back, and I think I'm fine, but... Uh, we'll play this one. This one. This one's definitely the more proper one, given my own shape and potential defects. Okay. Uh, that's fine. If he's going to let me Hane at the head of two stones, I will do that quite happily. He's probably going to throw in here. Uh, I have to imagine to get this Hane and Sente. But who knows? He might just Hane on the outside. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> that hurts my ghost soul. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> can, I, can I just Hane here? This Hane is brutal, right? Oh, dear. <laughs> Just Hane. We have to just do it. Like, if your opponent just makes a silly shape, like, <laughs> just, just a silly, silly shape, <laughs> I think we have to do it. <laughs> All right, so he's going to defend there. He still has this, this, uh, actually, he doesn't have this link up at all anymore, right? Because I can Atari and pull back. Uh, all right, I could I could feasibly cut if this was really important, but it's not. This is the more important side at this point. And now that he's completely without eyes, I've profited. I've I've you know solidified another couple of points here. Totally ruined any potential. We're quite happy. Um, this is still very difficult for Black. It'd be really nice to have some sort of balancing stone over here because this cut can be realized. Oh my God, this is. Whew. Do you feel do you feel Black's pain? I'm gonna take that Atari right there. Uh, so it's all about this cut. It's all about this cut, and I think this is a time where you want to take the Tiger's Mouth, not this, because of this cut. Um, so this is this is. I think we just play here, and Black will have to run out. Probably gonna diagonal. But, okay, he could play that one. This just solidifies the corner in the the most direct way. Oh, man, I could even play this one. I have I have the liberties for it after this 
exchange. And so I probably should. This is very passive, but it's so solid. Like how many points is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, 18 plus another four, 22, 24. It makes it like a solid 24 points. That's some tasty, tasty points, gang. Mm. Let's take the solid points. He still has to find a way to fix. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. This threatens to push cut here or peep. Okay, he's gonna keep this up. Pretty reasonable, pretty reasonable. Really wanna fight, really wanna fight this. I think, I think I can. So he should just cut. Yep. And then here's the magic. This is not magic, I die. <laughs> have to have to play a move. This one hmm. here and pull back or just pull back. I think just pull back. I really want this one, right? Because this one makes this Atari feel real bad. This this one. This is really bad shape for white, right? But it's it's about the liberties on these two black stones. Uh, no, we just have to pull back. We'll do safety first for this group. So I can make an eye here. He can he can poke away this eye and sente, but then it shorts him the liberty that he really would like to have. So there's a little bit of a problem there. Hmm. This is very dangerous. This is gonna make everyone fix. Everyone fix. Let's have just everyone fix everything, right? And again, I'm counting on this profit that I made here to sort of carry me. Also, this is getting to be a really big move. All right, so he's gonna fix that way, which means I can fix this way. Everybody's just fixing. Look at these three stones. Aren't they doing hard work now? Give me an eye. His turn is huge. He has to. He has to keep pushing. Yeah. Again, I think he has to keep pushing, and I'm. I'm like real close to just being totally safe. Three blocks eh, seems seems legit. Let's. Uh, I think we're fine. <laughs> Maybe I don't even need these three stones, right? This this actually would even work without them. <laughs> Certainly gives me a great degree of confidence. Um, all right, so we should be looking through. This is, this is feeling really big. <laughs> okay. Oh, so he's going to try to link up a little bit. There's a peep here that's pretty bad for me. <laughs> so I might try to play here and here. Uh, I still have this cut too. That is kind of interesting. doesn't actually <laughs> quite work, <laughs> but all right, we're going to, we're going to give up some bottom points, but it's going to make my life a lot easier. He should probably pe take this peep right now. Oh no, actually I might, I might just Tanuki and take this move. Yeah. The timing for his peep was actually kind of tricky. All right. So we gave up some points here. Uh, I'm not going to be able to harass this nearly as much. And I did take a local loss over here after this exchange. So maybe this, this move probably wasn't necessary, but it did give me a, a great de degree of confidence. Um, looks like he's got to come after this. But hard, because there's still this cut. Hard. Yeah, this, is, this is now the game. If he can harass this for a profit, uh, he can still win. Okay, there's the peep. <laughs> but I think I think we've noted it's too late, right? Right, gang? Let's just play this one. This one looks pretty cool. I don't know if it is cool, but it looks cool. <laughs> it is one of the normal responses, but not what I'm counting on linking up to a stick here. 
I do have to be careful this actually this move sets up this move still technically. Okay. So he's gonna take that. That's a big move. But again, I don't think this is big enough. I think the key the key was to play over here. And there are some options for how to best do this, and I don't know which one is the best one. I really don't know. Hmm. Does this make this cut work? This one does, right? <laughs> All right, I don't, this is this is a very wishy-washy kind of move, like it, okay, he's gonna defend that way, that's great. So let's slap it. Again, if your opponent already defends something kind of solidly, or a little bit too solidly, make them defend it again and again and again. It doesn't matter if you throw away a stone or two in the process, just get those free moves. And again, he doesn't have to defend this again, but it's gonna feel real bad if he doesn't. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm no problems over here now. I am Mr. No Problem. All right, let's do another little, you know, keep in mind territorial balance. So we're doing a lot this game. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm counting in pairs, so optimistically, I'm giving, I'm giving my opponent the benefit of the doubt for a lot of these endgame moves. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, so about 44 points. He's going to play here, huh? Okay, I'm not sure why. Uh, so about 44 points. Oh, he's going to fight here. This seems like a terrible idea, Black. Are you sure? I mean, all right. I wonder... Take this Atari. And... So I get to play here. How hard is it for him to kill me? Looks... looks... plausible. <laughs> There's definitely potential for death. Dun, dun, dun. There's a little bit of a cove thing down here happening. Go for an eye. Can I play here? This is kind of overplay, right? Not actually, I think this is fine. Let's hunt a. Let's just hunt a. I can play this again. Does it work, though? I, I really want to somehow find a way to threaten this move, which doesn't work outright. But, with enough love and tenderness, and massaging. Always gotta massage it. Alright, um, not quite, not quite. But man, is it close. He's gotta play there. And again, we're, we're being really disruptive to his eye shape. So I could play here in Sente, and then play down here to kill him, right? Like, this is just dead? I think he just died. Let's just assume that he died. <laughs> this whole thing is dead. I push in once first, right? He has this... Oh, it doesn't do anything. Right. Uh, can I make a knight over here? Um, kind of. Where, where, what do I have to worry about? <laughs> what am I... Uh, it's, a ca it's a giant capturing race, but... Feels like it's good for me. Let's just play there. Wasn't it nice to have this little stick poking out? <laughs> Again, this just sort of ruins his day as far as like his central influence, right? Where 
Like, he's sort of banking on getting something in the center, and I end up killing him in the center. That feels right. Totally feels right. Uh, that's reasonable. <laughs> and so actually, this isn't... That's so, so this isn't even an eye, right? <laughs> oh, I have to respond again. So he can... I can either respond again, and he can make an, a gote eye. All right, so let's just respond. So this eye is gote. He has this move, which is more interesting. But does it? I just don't think it works. I don't think it does anything. We don't care about this. So when he plays here, I can play here. Here is here. Uh, this is all safe. So he can he can essentially force a capturing race between this and this, but it's not it's it's so hard for him to just even kill this. Never mind, or it's so hard for him to get take away the eyes. Never mind, you know, start a capturing race and expect to win. Uh, so yeah, so <laughs> this is one of those games where my opponent played for the center. Oh oh, co. Oh, I should have seen this. Yeah, he's got this throw-in, Ko. That's cool. All right, so game on. He found he found a little thing. Yep. Here and then here. Although, wait, then I just play here, right? Yeah. <laughs> it looks cool. Oh, no, but it still, it still is a cut to here, I think. What? I won, I think. It didn't give me the, the happy sound. Where's my happy sound? It goes blah, 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 then it's all like, or not, no, that's the lost sound. What's the happy sound? It should say win. No, da 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 da, da. that's the happy sound. How come I didn't get it? Because I didn't, I didn't greet him. I didn't say, nice to meet you. All right. Uh, here, well, let's start review. Oh, we got it. Oh, but it didn't play the sound. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so here, if we preview this move, if I actually just play there, then he plays there, and I play there, this is still nothing. Okay, so that that's not a thing. <laughs> if he then, however, plays here, and I play... Oh, is this, this, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> not even, it's, it's not a real co. Well, it looks like a co. <laughs> okay. I thought, I thought there might be some move here that threatens this. So, if I, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, this, this move doesn't actually threaten these three in combination with this. Yeah, so there's this nothing, there's this nothing. Okay. All right, let's go back a little bit. And let's talk about how we won this game, because I think if you came in, it just sort of felt like the game was pretty even, like the game looked very even. And during the commentary, I was already telling you, like, oh, yeah, I feel very comfortable here. Like, this is a very easy game for white. And I kind of want you all to understand why. And so if you don't understand that, stick around. You have a game no, I don't. I don't. Go, go away. <laughs> uh, if you don't understand that, stick around. And if you already do understand that, then, you know, I don't know, go, go take a walk and <laughs> do something nice outdoors while the weather is good. All right, let's go back to the beginning. And we talked about this high, high approach a little. Like, he's looking for influence. This is very consistent with two four fours. Again, it's not played very much now with the robots because, like I said, this Joseki is seen as good for white. It's just a couple points better, like two points better than what Black's result is. But that being said, it's still playable, right? It's only two points of loss. How many of your games are determined by two points that you play? And also, some people just like playing Moyos, and so this is more fun. Uh, you know, or more to their style, more to their liking. Um, that being said, at this point, right, I had a hard time deciding the the points that I could have picked, right, that were up for consideration. All of these are pretty good candidates, and then you have the three threes, maybe even the G two. I could also play H. Like all all these are all these are good. I don't like playing this side when I already have a low group over here. Um, and again, I kind of wrote off the. 
how do I undo? <laughs> I don't know. Undid a lot of the um, the corner moves because again, I'm not a robot. All right, so we went there again. Break up the inside. I have I have my two point advantage. Right, I'm looking at this game, this board, and going, look, I have my Komi and I have my two point corner advantage. Let's just play on the inside and continue to try to break up any sort of large frameworks. Let's be consistent with that as our style. And also consistent with that is just taking a settled group, right? I don't want to get attacked. I don't want Black to have an opportunity to form a large Moyo. I have my two points. Let's just play as even as Joseki as we can in the direction that breaks up the board into the most small pieces. And so this is a fine Joseki for both players. Like, I think both everybody's pretty comfortable. Um... White can still be harassed, black can be harassed, but like no one's in any real danger. And there's also not a lot of points here. We really didn't, no one took anything large. Black's influence is worth a little bit more, right? This is actually quite a strong wall. It's facing a fairly open direction of the board. It'd be even better if there was a black stone here, but we just got to keep that in mind. And so I played over here first. Again, it's one of the open corners, so it's big. And I also want to know if like, how, how much do I have to actually defend this? I don't know if this is correct. It may have even just been better just to play a more direct defending move. I don't have to think about this group anymore, for instance. And this stone is still really limited. Like, my stone is very limited in its potential. There's a wall here and a black group here. This stone is limited by this group here and this group here. So these corners are not going to develop into anything large. But anyway, we played a little bit. We asked for a little bit more. And my opponent said, no, do you have a, a weakness? There you go, that's great. <laughs> Tanuki. Uh, I have no idea if this is correct, but again, I, I wanted I wanted a little bit on both sides, and so I got it. <laughs> this move is very strange. What should black do? I think I think something like this would be the more normal uh, kind of continuation. Uh, at this point, I don't know, there's there's a couple of good moves. Like this approach, this jump. Uh, you could do this little submarine here or here or here. Like all these are similar in idea. Um, like these are all these are all fine ideas. Maybe something like F. If I'm being really, really creative, or now GH, I guess. Not really sure. Not really sure. But I expected something like this. Um, and also, I, I might even uh, well, no, I probably wouldn't Tanuki. I'd probably play something. But if I played. I can't click on the point. <laughs> if I played something like this move, right, and my opponent defended, no, I guess I would still play. Um, I, th I think the point I'm trying to make is I would still not feel completely attached to these two stones. I might still look for an opportunity to bail and just dive into 3-3 three, three and see if I can get the corner in exchange for him getting the outside, which is actually kind of what happened in the real game. Uh, very similar to this move. Because so I got this, he blocked, and I went, okay, I get the corner now. It just feels like this variation is a lot better for white than if he kicked and extended. Uh, I have a little bit more difficult time. I have a smaller corner, etc. All right, so anyway, my opponent elected for this, and then here, this this feels like an overplay. Like, this, this is where things kind of really deviated. Now, I can understand a, a person not wanting to play this because this feels over-concentrated and still feels like white has some moves to harass you. But in this case, if black just plays here, uh, I'm going to take something like this and jump out. And, you know, black's safe. Like, it's black's totally safe. So, you know, black makes 10 points, white makes 10 points. Uh, seems fair, but... Uh, the thing I don't like about it for white, again, is that I have two low groups over here. So if black starts really, um, you know, harassing these groups, let's say something like this, <laughs> you can see how these could be united into something rather large down here for black in the center. But anyway, this certainly felt like an overplay. At this point, um, black really, I think, I think should kind of bail. <laughs> Like, I think, I think this connection is good. And this connection is in part good, not just because there's actually enough space down here to make something. Even if white does something like this, or black does something like this, and white makes a, a bunch more points, you can kind of see how this is all still working together. And furthermore, this white group actually doesn't have guaranteed two eyes yet. This this group can be, can be harassed. Uh, black gets anything else over here, and... Uh, it's actually a real danger zone for white. So 
Here, I can show you some things. If we play this way, black can take this, and if black comes this way, uh, <laughs> here, if black, does black need to... Here. It depends on how much black needs to fix here or here, and in this case it's not quite strong enough, because if black comes in now, it certainly looks... Uh, oh, maybe, maybe, I don't, it looks like a huge fight here, and then there's this cut, so it's real, it's a tough fight, like it's really tough, but it's tough on everyone. Um, but on the other hand, right, even if just black makes this and then gets a little bit stronger over here, right, you can see how this fight might, <laughs> all this, this white corner can really run into some trouble. So this is more what I was expecting once, um, Black plays this. I was looking at black changing directions. All right, original. But my opponent didn't. He followed down. He was insistent. All this is his. Did not want to let me connect, right? He, he already invested these two stones and this stone and basically taking these 10 to 15 points. And so that's what they do. Go players decide what they want and then they take it, whether or not it's good for them or not. And this is just this is just a variation you can only play if white has the ladder. If I don't have the ladder, this is no good. Some of you may have wondered during the review, how did I read the ladder so fast? Well, I know this stone is next to the star point, and when that happens, I know that means it's going to come next to the star point on this side. <laughs> this is how how it works. <laughs> if this is one uh, space over to the left on this star point, that means when the ladder is run, it'll this, that stone will hit here, and obviously this stone will break a ladder that hits right there. So, very easy ladder to read. And then here, this is just, I don't know, Black's just sort of wishful thinking. And he got a little bit of a group over here. The question is, how bad should we feel about that? And the answer is really not that bad. Like, white has a nice corner. It's not, it's not like, the completely most solid corner in the world. If Black gets a couple moves in a row, right, we can we'd still die. But we got a little bit on the outside. We got an, we captured two stones, right? So this is really more like 11 points, 10 or 11 points, um, which is pretty good considering it was Black's corner and we were under attack, <laughs> right? And now Black is creating another weak group that is not not at all united to the rest of the stones. <laughs> so we're pretty happy about that. We just took another. This is this is kind of like an I win move, right? This is like look, there's nothing, there's nothing really important going on in this board. I'm just going to take some points and say that that's enough to win the game. And those are always dangerous moves to make. Uh, my opponent stabilizes, which is great. I played these. I'm not, I probably don't, shouldn't extend this next one. I think this is a mistake, but we already talked about that. And again, I, I sort of provoked a fight over here. More or less needlessly. Like, I really don't need to provoke a fight. Like, I could have easily just played here and just continue to play more I win style moves. Again, this is very nice because it reduces Black's influence. Like how much territory is Black really gonna make from this three stone wall? You know, there's eight, 10 points here, plus maybe a couple more here. For a look at how many stones Black has already invested to this outside, this would be very nice. I don't need to go looking for trouble <laughs> with a move like this, but it's fun when I do. So we played this move, and then this is this is a really big turning point here. At this point, this is kind of a fairish fight, a black weak group versus a white weak group. But when black takes a tempo to try to get a little bit stronger, uh, I guess to make sure that this black group has a way to get out and has shape and isn't going to get cut off. Um, I mean, that is a th actually yeah, that that is a thing that I didn't comment enough on this game is how this group actually does affect the health of the black corner group. When black plays here, all of a sudden this is no longer a fair fight, right? My my group is up and around the black weak group. And so this is just kind of a, a fun game. Black tries to fix the shape over there, and I go, that's great. <laughs> Let's continue harassing this weak black group. In the process, I completely solidify this 24-point corner, make the center group even stronger. And I invite a fight here, mainly because I have these three stones. If I don't have these three stones, I probably don't fight this way. I'm probably not as confident. Um, but in the end, uh, you know, all this is, is pretty simple, right? We're just both uh, helping, defending the weak groups. My opponent takes a little more profit there. I'm just being threatening and annoying. I'm just saying, look, I've got so many points in the bank here, here, and here. 
there's just not enough place on this board. And so that thought is always in the back of my mind where I, I just I just have enough points to win the game. I just it's just the rest of the game is a sort of damage control. And so you play games like that. That happens uh, a lot in Go, where you have, you know, somebody, hopefully you, right, just take a bunch more points early on in the game. And your opponent doesn't have you know, a Moyo formed yet or or enough territory to really compete. And so you just kind of play very defensive, solid. I mean, I didn't I didn't exactly play solid because I did got a little aggressive here at the end. Um, but it was in response to aggression, right? You respond with aggression with more aggression. And so this black cut uh, was <laughs> the aggressive response to me just harassing. I'm just I'm just, you know, harassing black with stones like this move. <laughs> Uh, just doing damage control, right? Like, just making sure nothing bad can happen. Either black takes a lot of points or I get killed in the center. And so that's it. So this this game, uh, you know, in the end being was pretty simple, right? Like, there's not not a lot of complicated reading, not a lot of, you know, real, real dangerous situations. You know, it's just damage control. And... Uh, that's how it goes sometimes. And again, I think I think maybe that's also just the fact I'm playing a sandbagger game and I'm playing someone a couple stones below my rank where I don't have to work really hard. I can just do damage control and then hopefully teach you guys, you know, the same sort of solid reasoning and play in your own game so you don't get into trouble. Some of you, your style is so much more violent and much more aggressive that it'd be very difficult for you to play this way. And uh, my hat goes out to you, or my hat goes off to you. <laughs> my heart goes out to you. Uh, that's great. Uh, but, you know, knowing knowing when to go balls out and knowing when to, you know, just just <laughs> lay down and, and lay the board to, to sleep in its cradle and just make everyone just nice and calm, both those are really good skills to have um, depending on how your game goes. Because you will have games where you need to go balls out and you'll have games where you just need to put everybody to sleep and just calm things down, keep everything nice and boring. And just totally depends on, on those opening moves. And that's one of the, the amazing things about Go, right? Just those first, and even just 10 moves of the game, determine so much of the shape of what comes afterward. And that's why Go is so amazing. So, anyway, <clears throat> hope you enjoyed this other Sandbagger installment. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>